welcome back to the channel guys today we're going to be doing installation of the boost leash boost controller and we also have the fat fab installation bracket that we're all going to be installing so let's jump right into the unboxing all right so we have the fat fab bracket this bracket is specifically for the s550 and it mounts um, below the uh, radio right by where the cigarette lighter is so we're going to show the installation on this bracket comes with all the installation hardware the bracket and you get two stickers woohoo for stickers everybody loves stickers and then we have the boost leash controller here and with the boost leash let's see so we have the wire harness which pretty simple installation it's only a couple of wires um, that we have here for installation that's what four wires so we'll see we go over what each wire is for once we start the installation we have here um, pretty detailed instructions oh more stickers woohoo and we have some detailed instructions Let's see what else we have in the box. So we have the controller itself. The controller is pretty nice. Just to show you guys, as far as the bracket, how it goes, fits, fits pretty good in there. Pretty neat. So we have that. Also here we have the two boost solenoids. And we have the, the map sensor. Cut. So this is the boost controller I currently have. It's the Innovate SCG1. It's a pretty cool um, boost controller. Has some good features. Um, has AFR, built-in AFR, uh, wideband. It does also have um, the capability of cut boosts. Um, if you go too lean or too rich, it does have um, boost cut based on PSI. So it's a pretty nice controller. Um, I decided to switch controller to the leash because the leash is a little bit more uh, fine-tuned. I'll be able to ramp in the boost um, in small increments as opposed to having all the boosts coming at once, which usually cause traction issues. So with the leash, um, I'll be able to ramp it in in stages. With the Innovate, I wasn't able to do that. So that's the main reason for switching. So I'm just gonna jump into um, taking out the Innovate on installing everything, and then we'll jump into the installation for the boost leash. Okay, see you guys in a second. Yep, so there we go. We got the uh, Innovate SCG1 out. We got the uh, map sensor, the solenoid, um, the gauge itself. And the pad. We got all of that out. Yes, guys, I do not have any passenger seat at the moment. Race car life. So um, I'm gonna get the instructions and start the installation on the leash. Okay, so to start the install, this is where the mount goes. So you have to remove this plastic piece, rubber piece, and the mount is gonna go here using those existing screws so we're going to remove those screws and then mount this up okay so we have the screws removed and then in the uh, kit it comes with these spacers now these spacers we're going to place inside the hole And it also comes with longer screws, these longer screws, and then these are going to be the screws that mount the uh, boost controller to the bracket. So let's go ahead and install the bracket now. Also, before you install the bracket, um, these two nuts, you're going to have to put them in the side right there. You have a hole on each side. So you have to put the nuts in there so when you put the screw, it will be able to catch on the nut. So, let me see how I'm going to do this with one hand. So just like that, you got to slap the nut in there. 
No, I don't know if you guys can see, but right there, now it creates a thread. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just gonna slot the nut right on the side here. Ooh. Dropped it in the cup holder. Okay, and just like that, with some YouTube magic, got it installed. I did run the wires here. I'm gonna pretty much run it along this line and bring it under the carpet. But yeah, um, got it installed, so I'm just gonna run the wires now. All right, guys, so it's been a couple of days uh, since I started the install. It's been raining pretty bad here and I got busy with work and stuff. Um, I did complete the install, but I'm still gonna go over um, what I did step by step for you guys. So right back to where I left off um, was the wiring. And as you can see, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It has uh, four wires. And again, the red wire is connected to ignition power. So only a power source when the ignition is on or when the car is running. Uh, black wire is ground, so power and ground. Pretty simple right there. Uh, the yellow wire is going to be your trans brake wire. So if you do have a trans brake, you connect it into that wire. Um, so once you press the trans brake button, you'll be able to activate the launch feature on the boost leash controller. And the gray wire is going to be for a scramble button and again the yellow and the gray are optional and the scramble button is pretty simple um, my trans brake I do have a trans brake so I hooked it up um, I hooked up that wire and the scramble gray wire I did hook that up to the other button I have on the steering wheel so these two buttons are gonna be functional so this one when I hit the trans brake it activates the launch feature and then this one is gonna be for the scramble um, so that's pretty simple. I'll um, show you guys. So with the ignition on Ooh, Bougie bougie. So right there you see the controller comes on with the ignition on and if I see the car it still runs So we're gonna turn that off ignition off controller is off So again, the wiring is pretty straightforward um, black is ground red is power Yellow is for the trans brake and gray is for scramble button if you choose to hook those up. Again, these two are optional and you don't need to do those. Um, the black and the red are the most important ones. Okay, so that's it pretty much for the wiring. Um, like I said, I did run the wires under here and I ran it up to here and then ran it um, to the switches. So it's pretty clean install, you can't see any wires. So that part is taken care of. Let's go pop the hood and go over where all the lines and everything go. All right, so let's go over the routing of all the lines and everything. Um, it looks complicated. I had a few questions myself um, because I'm not running CO2. It looks complicated, but it's not very complicated. It's pretty uh, straightforward. So let's start with the map sensor. So the map sensor has two lines that needs to be run to the map sensor the first one is going to be for boost reference and that's this one right here so that's going to be telling the map sensor what boost is going into the motor and for that one i connected mine right here that's right by the throttle body i connected this one right here and i ran it all along here into the car because the map sensor um, wire is short so that mounts in the car so that one and again that's this one at the top here that says boost that one goes uh, from right there by the throttle body straight into the car to the map sensor the second one is gate which is also going to the map sensor so this one as you can see in the picture this one comes off the top of the wastegate this is the wastegate that's a picture of the wastegate and gate comes off the top of the wastegate and goes to the to the gate on the map sensor 
for that one if you guys could see here on my waste gate I have uh, two ports I did have to drill an extra port on there for that one and that's only on one side you only have to add that on one side so I do have two ports so one of those is going straight to the map sensor so those two are taken care of again the first one which is boost that's boost reference that one is coming from right there and that goes uh, straight to the map sensor and the other one is coming from the wastegate top of the wastegate and that also goes all the way to the map sensor okay so we have here next is uh, the other wires that are top of the wastegate so those are going to the solenoid as you can see here you have one right here and another one right here so these two are on the top of the wastegate you tee them together and those go to the solenoid there are two solenoids increase solenoid decrease solenoid I mounted my solenoids uh, right there and you can see there are two lines here coming from the solenoid okay if you follow these two lines they're teed right here just like in the picture so you have uh, two lines again this one and you have this one top of the wastegate and both of those are teed right here both of these are teed right here and they come down and again those are going to the top and this one top of the wastegate and on this side the second one top of the wastegate so I have those two going into the solenoids and again we have the solenoid mounted right there okay. so we have that taken care of so again we have this wire already done I mean not wire but this uh, hose these hoses already done this one is done that's to the map sensor and then we have uh, these to the solenoids so next we have the two for the bottom of the wastegate as you can see here bottom of the wastegate bottom of the wastegate and it says connect anywhere from compressor cover to the boost pipe what I did with mine is I drill my charge pipe right there I'm not sure if you guys could see that but I drill right there and I connected uh, mine right there just very close to coming out of the turbo so that way the reading it gets is a very good reading and a very strong reading so I connect that one right there to the charge pipe and then those two are teed off right here and that goes to the bottom uh, right there you can see the weight and on this side it's the same thing uh, this side is a little harder to show you guys but at the bottom of the wastegate that one goes also so that's pretty straightforward and the last one is going to be this one that's the one that goes to the sol uh, to the uh, CO2 if you're running CO2 and that's at the back of the solenoid yeah, and as you can see that's the one at the back of the solenoid and that's the one right there that says air in and again if you're running a uh, CO2 that one goes to the CO2 if you're not running CO2 well it tells you right here optional you could connect this line to the boost pressure instead of CO2 turbo compressor cover would be the best place to connect do not connect to the intake manifold so basically that line you could connect anywhere um, it does say the turbo cover compressor cover is the best place to connect that or you could also connect it uh, to the throttle body I mean not to the throttle body but right before it enters into the manifold does not want you to connect it to the manifold and that pretty much completes the install um, all the lines and all the wires um, it's not that bad I did uh, put all the wires together to clean it up and the solenoid I like the solenoid there I have the fuel cover the fuel rail cover so when I put that on it does cover most of the lines you guys can see so that completes the install um, the last step of the install is right here very important 
and that's this line right here see it says right here after you're done with the plumbing disconnect the line here that's this line that you teed in right there or Y you disconnect that line and you blow in it with your mouth if you can feel yourself steady blowing into it and it's not holding pressure then you have a leak most leaks are inside the wastegate either the fitting or adjuster screw or the diaphragm you must fix any leak or the system will not work good at all so that's pretty uh pretty straightforward that completes the install i'll make another video going over um the settings and how it works and how it feels differently compared to the uh the innovate scg1 that i had so uh thank you guys for watching and um, like i said i'll be doing another video which shows um the different settings in the gauge and uh, how it feels differently compared to the SCG1. Hopefully this install is helpful to someone who um, wants to install the leash. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please post below.